In emergency preparedness, there are many things that are important, but one of the most important things is safe, clean drinking water. This is the Urban Sentinel, and let's get into it. All right, I am out in one of my city parks over by a pond, and I'm going to be doing a demonstration and review on the Itta Hill water purification system. Now there's a lot to unpack with this, literally, so we're gonna go right through it and kind of move things along. First off, it is a battery-powered portable system. Uh, it's got a pull handle here, you can lift and carry by this, and then you have the cover lid for the two filters that are on the inside. It's relatively simple to operate. You've got a type C plug here that you charge with, and then you have the on off power button and the indicator lights for the two filters. One is a hybrid filter and one is a reverse osmosis filter. Now, Ida Hill sent me out this uh, purification system to test it out and demonstrate it for you. And they gave me all the basic equipment that it comes with right out from ordering. So everything that I'm gonna show you is what it comes with when you first order it. All right, so you got this water resistant drawstring bag. Start pulling out. You have two dispenser hoses, the white hose, which will be for your drinking water and then the blue hose, which will be for your waste or domestic water. Then your inlet fill hose with a uh, scrub type filter at the end that connects to the back end of the system. And it also comes with this filter wrench, which specifically when you insert the filters, and I'll show you how to do that, you'll need to use the filter wrench to remove them because of the pressure difference. It also comes with a simple leaflet of instructions, but instructions for the operation are also on the actual cover lid for the filters. Now, the inside, the filter areas are clearly marked RO and hybrid. So, the filters would be sealed up in plastic. You're gonna simply take them if you notice right here, there's a directional arrow on one end of the filter cap. You want to line that up right like that. So the actual edge of this entire filter lines up with the unlock side. You push it down. You can feel a little resistance because it's pretty much vacating whatever little air is in there. And you're going to turn it clockwise to the lock position. You got the reverse osmosis, the RO filter, same thing. You look for the little arrow indicator and the unlock symbol. Slot it in, give it a push down, and then turn. And removing it using the handle, it simply fits on top and you turn it counterclockwise. And the main reason why you're going to need the handle in removing it is because once the pumps have been activated, the basically a vacuum pressure occurs and it makes it very difficult to do it by hand without that to get the proper leverage. Then you close this up. Now, one of the things that you also want to make sure that you do is you charge it up before use. And it does come with a double-ended Type-C cable, so you would need some type of power adapter to either plug the other Type-C in, which if you've got a portable solar bank, you could do that, or a small power bank, or just your regular AC wall outlet or DC car cigarette lighter adapter that you could plug into. I actually used a different cable that had the uh, standard USB plug on one end and a Type-C on the other end to charge it this morning. Uh, I got full green light on there, meaning it was fully charged, and according to what the company says is effectively one full charge you can generate enough power to do approximately nine gallons worth of water. Now, one of the key things that you have to pay attention to is they tell you to let the system flush itself, pumping through for about 10 minutes, circulating water taking in and flushing it out to basically get everything going. And I watched a few different videos myself and I did notice that the denser the material is, meaning the more crud and grit and everything else that's in the water, the slower that process is going to take because it has a lot more to filter through. Now, I did a flush through in my own house in my kitchen just to get the basics of the operation going. But now I'm going to show you here putting in and running through the system as it is out here in a live version. 
Now the instructions will tell you to first connect the inlet flow pipe. You see it's simple threaded, place it down. I find it's easier if you hold this end here. It's pretty much food grade tube with a zip tie around it. You want to get a good grip on this and then tighten it clockwise by hand. You won't even need a tool. That's in nice and tight. Next up, behind this uh, dust cap, you've got the two outflows. The white is for your drinking water, the blue is for your domestic or wastewater, and the coordinating tubes that they use, so you want to connect the blue in here and then the white one in here. Now, the tube, the white tube is about a little over two and a half, almost three feet in overall length. And the domestic tube, the blue tube, is actually about three feet long. I don't know why they're different lengths, it's just the way it works out. Now, interesting thing that I will point out, and maybe it just happened to me, after I had finished doing the initial flush, I went to remove this tube and it pulled out no problem. This one, it took a little bit of effort. I had to actually get a uh, gripper pad to get a better grip on it and pull as I held onto the machine to pull it away. So now the next thing you want to do is you want to take the inlet hose and put that into your water source. And I'm going to do this whole walkthrough with this device and I'll show you the results as we go along. And just for reference, this is an unopened bottle of water. This is an empty bottle. I'm actually going to be using that to uh, take in the drinking water so we can see how it looks. All right, so the instructions say you want to take the water inlet side and put it into the water source. Let me get you a little closer here. Next, you want to hold the power button down for approximately three seconds, and then it'll engage. And I say let it pump for about 30 seconds as it starts flushing things through. Now this is the wastewater coming out. In fact, let's just take a look. All right, now, right now, the flow is slowed down because now it's pushing it through the secondary filter. Now, this is all still wastewater, and as you can see, it's getting very, very cloudy. They say that for the domestic water, you can use that for uh, cleaning up, cleaning clothes, that sort of thing, but not for drinking and this is the primary reason why. With the dual filters, this filter here gets rid of most of the big sedimentary stuff and a lot of the nooks and crannies that are in there, but it doesn't make it completely safe for drinking. Something like this would still be suggested to boil it for 10 minutes before attempting to consume it. But considering that it passes through those filters and you've got the cleaner water, you really shouldn't have to unless you were in an extremely, extremely dire situation. But in this case, this, as you can see, not looking the best. I'm gonna pour this out. Now we've got the drinking water side and let's start going through. And as you can see, that is some murky water. Luckily there aren't a lot of ducks out because they usually come around and they get quite aggressive. Now, looking at this in real time, I would say the flow rate for this, just based upon this size bottle, you could easily fill up, you know, six to 12 of these in a very short period of time. So if you have 
water containers already around and you needed to refill them, this would be an ideal situation that you could do it pretty quickly. And considering the length of line that you have with the inlet hose, you don't have to specifically be right there up on it in the water as some other uh, water purification devices need you to be in direct contact with it for it to work. Now, overall, you don't hear too much because it is very, very quiet. I mean, extremely quiet. I can hear some vibration. I'll try to get my mic a little bit closer to it. But in general, extremely quiet. And I just lost some of the water. Now to turn it off, you're going to press the same power button. You hold it down for just over a second. You'll be able to tell. You can feel the vibration on the device. And also when the light stops, you'll know that the pump is turned off. Oh, went too long. Am I hitting the right? There we go. Yeah, it's a, it's a quick snap. It took me a second or two. Now, all right, so this is the filtered drinking water from the pond. And full disclosure, I have tasted this water before using a different water system. And well, I'm not dead. It wasn't unpleasant, but it wouldn't be a normal thing that I would do if it weren't a non-emergency. So I'm gonna see how this goes now. Well, it doesn't smell like pond. All right, I'll say this. It tastes probably closer to tap water that's been left sitting out in a glass for a few hours. I mean, it's definitely colder, not ice cold, but. No distinctive taste, no distinctive odor whatsoever versus I can smell nature in the water here. Like I said, there's the inlet line there. Let's just start pulling it up. There we go. Out of the murky depths. So this pretty much stops a large portion of the big debris, letting it come through. And as you can see, the line is nice and clear. So again, the pre-bought packaged bottle water and then the pond water. As far as odor, none. Taste, none. I mean, it tastes like this would here. As far as any like residual aftertaste, so far nothing. Now the company wants to promote it for outdoor use hiking, camping, that sort of thing. And I can definitely see the need for it, but here's where I depart from that line of the narrative. This weighs about 13 pounds. Now it's not heavy, but if you're just going on a three, four or five hour hike out and back, you really won't need to lug something like this around. Bottle of water, sizable canteen, camelback, what have you. And if you're concerned about having to drink water out on your hike for whatever reason, you can find those small purifier tablets could be a quick thing to use in that short term. Where I think this would excel is in two places. One, your kitchen, your apartment, your home, your residence. For those conditions where you either have questionable drinking water, as we've seen plenty of times, it could be an accident that happens at the water facility, it could be some type of natural disaster where you still have water available coming out of your tap, 
but now you're concerned about the safety levels of it. And even boiling water does help to kill a lot of the virus, viruses, bacteria, and fungal fungi that are in there. It doesn't necessarily filter out all of the other things that are coming through the tap. Also, if you are going camping, let's say you've got an RV or a tow behind trailer, or you're going up to that cabin in the woods, this would be something that you would want to have with you even if there is some type of well water or domestic water supply there, it never hurts to have this as an additional backup. And this way you can pump out five gallons worth, fill a bucket up and have it on hand. And I will say this, price wise, out of pocket, it will cost you a few hundred dollars. But if you plan it out in this fashion, if you have other people that are part of your emergency preparedness group, you all chip in, you all pitch in. And if you have a mutual rendezvous point, somebody's house, location, farm, whatever it is, that that's where you're all going to meet up when things get really bad, you have this already on site at that location. So no one has to lug it around. You already have it ready to go to be set up to be used. And between the two filters, I believe the hybrid filter is good for about 350 gallons and the reverse osmosis, the RO filter is good for about 900 gallons. So you're not going to immediately run those filters dry even if you effectively crank out gallon after gallon after gallon. And if you want, you just go online, you can find the filters to replace these for I believe under 40 or about $40. And reasonably speaking, just on the numbers alone, you probably wouldn't need more than two of the hybrid filters and one more RO filter to ensure that you've got a good amount of a few hundred gallons worth of water that you can work with. And with that being said, that would be a better benefit for people that are bugging in at their location where the water supply is questionable or your availability to just keep buying bottled water, whether it's simply because you don't have the space or at the time period where the emergency happens, you know that this is now a high commodity resource that you're not going to find on the shelf right away. And if there's that much of a danger outside, you don't want to go out in it. So I look at it this way, this purification system, definitely a plus for in-home, in-house under those conditions. It could be a benefit if you do long-term camping where you're going out four or five days and obviously you're not going to be bringing four or five days worth of bottled water with you. This would also have the benefit because you still battery charged up, you got to charge it up some way, solar power, run it off your car battery, whatever it takes. But at that point, once it's fully charged, you're getting nine gallons worth out of it. So that can definitely get you through most short-term incidences. And if you plan it out, long-term conditions. And again, I'll put links up in the video and I'll try to put them down in the description. So check them out. Tell me what you think and I'll catch you in the next one.